Hi, my name's Ben and welcome to the Expat Blueprint, the platform educating expats to financial freedom. Today we're going to do something uh, a little bit different, we we're trying a little bit of a different format today. Uh, what I wanted to do was start to introduce and, and, and bring on uh, to the show uh, some really interesting uh, people and people who can tell their story and also we're going to discuss how money and personal finances sort of influence their lives. Today uh, is, uh, a, a, I've got a really, really special guest, uh, a very, very close friend of mine, someone that, who has definitely sort of touched my life and, and, and uh, has been a great friend throughout my time as being an expat. I know that you're going to love his story and, and I know you're going to love him. I am really pleasured uh, to introduce you to Mikey Ballard. How are you, mate? Yeah, good. Thanks for having me, Ben. How are you? Yeah, no, I'm good. Yeah. I'm good, pal. What I want to do is just basically introduce Mike and talk about how um, he came out here. Uh, how, how many years ago was that now? Sorry, 2011. 2011, I landed here, man. So it's, uh, this yeah. is the 10 year mark this year. Uh, 10 year from, mark, yeah. From? So, Boston, Boston. Boston. So, um, I was born and raised in Michigan, worked in Boston from 2008 to 2011. Our school in Boston um, is a pretty, uh, you know, pretty well established, pretty, uh, you know, kind of well known school. And so they, the UAE government brought our school out here for like a partner program kind of thing. So 2011 came up. Um, I just applied for a transfer out here and came out here and been out here uh, pretty much ever since. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But one of the first people, one of the first people I probably met were down down at the rugby club. Well, that, well, that's it. That's it. You know, when uh, when you come out here, like the rugby club is kind of like a hub to meet people. And uh, you know, I got dragged out to the rugby club. You know, my first week I was here, and uh, that was it. That was it. It was, uh, you know, the rest is history. Yeah, yeah. So, how have you found uh, expat life? I mean, what's that like? I mean, is it as you expected it, or or like well, did it take some getting used to? Well, or? like I, I I've had a lot of time to reflect on it. Like, and uh, it's it's one of those things where. You get paid more, like kind of the default is you like make double what you would back home. But like the trade-off is like you're not going to see your friends and you're not going to see your family. You know, you're going to get rid of all your stuff, you know. So like, is that worth it? You know, is, is that trade-off worth it to, you know, send all that stuff down the river and say, I'll see you guys once or twice a year. And, uh, you know, I think for anybody that's been out here for any amount of time, they said, yeah, that, it is worth it. It's, that's a good deal. Right, and so yeah. that's I, I kind of fall into that camp. Yeah. I think you, I think that's a really important point. I think you've got to constantly keep asking yourself that question because, mm -hmm. um, like you said, you do sacrifice a lot. And I think, especially in the year that we've just had, mm -hmm. um, a lot of people, a lot of expats in particular, have, have asked themselves that question and and uh, need to constantly sort of justify our, like being away from friends, family. But mm -hmm. happy in Abu Dhabi? Uh, no, no, it, absolutely happy here, um, comfortable here. Uh, it is it is a known a known good thing and I, hopefully I don't know I don't know what the camera is doing if you can see that I'm in a wheelchair but uh, I I am I am wheelchair bound so um, that was that was the main that's the main reason I'm out here man it doesn't snow and it doesn't rain right yeah. and so no snow no rain no it's ice it's pretty cold in uh, Michigan yeah, right yeah you, you you want snow rain and ice <laughs> man go to Michigan man so uh, so yeah that, that's part of the reason I'm here is for that so uh, I'm content I'm content yeah okay so Mike for, for those who might not know your story. Um, Obviously, um, like we said, we rugby player. Tell us, tell us uh, what happened. Yeah, so uh, so I came out in 2011. Uh, rugby club was my, my first stop. You know, um, I was brought out there, and you know, I kind of never left, man. I was uh, from 2011 to 2014. Uh, you know, we, we play year round. You know, there's always a season, there's always a game on, there's always something. So, um, you know, by 2014, so my third year out here, um, you know, I was kind of. You, strange to think of it, like one of the more senior members of the team, you know, like kind of like a, you know somebody who's kind of like on the field regularly kind of thing. And um, so we ended up we we're in the first 15. Ben and I were out there as long as his brother Sam and uh, you know all kinds of all kinds of other people you might may or may not know. But uh, we were we were 15 and 0 across the season. It was the final game of the year, the um, West Asia Cup final. And um, a guy made a line break coming straight at me. Somebody had him up high. I went low, and as I went low and grabbed his legs, another guy came up high, and then the, those three people kind of fell on top of me, folded up like that, and um, so I fractured my T12 L1 vertebrae. So like L1 is lumbar, so like lumbar just above the, the bottom of your spine. So, uh, so um, yeah, surgery, you know, that evening, that night, um, you know, a week in hospital in Abu Dhabi, medevac back to the United States, and then 
18 months of you know rehabilitation you know um and just getting you know back to like a regular life routine like getting through the day kind of thing yeah so did you at that point uh realize the extent of, uh, of what happened i mean did you know straight away that it was going to be within 10 seconds yeah within 10 seconds because like um if, if you make a tackle and your, your arm goes numb like that's i thought oh it, it's just a stinger right and then uh i was like well it's a stinger in my legs and then i was like that's a clue you know and then and then so pat milton our, our trainer came out our physio and we actually both knew at the same time because he told me after he he said as soon as he got out there he pinched my leg as hard as he could and i didn't i didn't flinch right and so that's when he knew spinal cord injury right and so he was telling me move your toes move your toes and in my head i said i can't i'm paralyzed right and that was that was like the moment like i knew like within so however long it took him to run out to the field and you know run through that you know so it was less than a minute so um so yeah it's whirlwind whirlwind tour man like but, I mean, I, I, all, I mean, all credit to you, 2021, you're sitting back in Abu Dhabi, uh, I mean, after everything that you've been through, yeah, um, yeah. I think this is the reason, one of the real sort of reasons um, I wanted to bring you on and, and your story is, is, is such a special story because you've been so positive and motivated the whole way through. Um, to the point now, you've got a new goal and a new challenge uh, that you're that you're going for. That yeah, you're going at. yeah. So uh, we we made it through, you know, back working, you know, back living, you know. Um, and so it took me a couple of years to get that sorted out. But um, you know, it was 2018. Um, so four years after the injury, 18 months after like return to work stuff. That as a, okay, we're really gonna focus on this, and we're really gonna make a run at the Paralympics. So. Uh, so um, and be able to say that in a way that it's like, yeah, he means business. Meaning, you know what I mean? Yeah. It's not that you, I could have said that you know from the jump, but like, it was like, okay, we're we're gonna do this, right? We're gonna commit to this. So um, it was 2018 where I kind of had my life in a spot where I could like focus on it. And so um, so yeah, so um, a member of the uh, member of the Team USA uh, para canoe, so the kayaking team. Um, that's the sport I decided to go with because. Uh, you know, I put together a workout video, sent it to every Olympic body I could, you know, get get my hands on an email for. USA Weightlifting was like interested because like I'm, I'm like a stocky guy, Big right? Stumble, yeah. And like like, and they emailed me and said, "Come to Colorado, we'll have a proper workout." But I was like, man, the goal is two Olympic cycles, right? So do I want to spend eight years of lifting heavy in a gym yeah. and doing that to my body, and then like, and then in 2025? When I win a, after I win a gold medal, like, what am I gonna do? Lose 50 pounds and undo yeah. everything I did for the last eight years. So like, that was, anyway, no, no, no judgment against weightlifting. <laughs> I was just like, I'm not doing it. I'm not doing it, right? And um, so I said, kayaking, eight years on the beach, Man. eight years in the sun. Could be like, the worst way to live yeah, your life. Yeah, I was like, but like, you see, me at the end of an eight-year kayaking run, man, what do you do? Like, yeah. move to California, move to Australia, like, wh whatever you want. Yeah, so yeah, so uh, kayaking. Kayaking was uh, the deal, um, so I, I'm new to it. You know, we're figuring it out. I'm happy with where I'm at, and uh, you know, we we'll just see where the chips fall. Yeah, that's mm -hmm. awesome. That's awesome. Mm -hmm. Look, obviously, this is a personal finance podcast. Um, yeah, yeah. So, so transition. Yeah. Like, so what I mean, uh, what I'd like to do is talk about. Um, sort of how money is, is intertwined with your life. I mean, I mean, let's start from the beginning. What are your earliest memories of, of money? I mean, how, would you, how was your, how was your uh, upbringing uh, affected the way that you look at money and, and stuff like that? So bo both my parents are pretty financially savvy. Yeah, you know, my, my dad's a dentist and then my mom, you know, is like, you know, a laboratory scientist type. And so mom ran the books and mom was always like the finance lady, right? So, uh, um, but I was the saver out of all out of all my brothers, right? I was the saver, right? And so I always kind of had money, but um, I also would save it so that I could just blow it. You know what I mean? So like, so like I uh, when I was in two thousand in nineteen ninety eight, all right. So twenty three years ago, right? I was fourteen, and my life savings was five hundred dollars, right? Wow. So I'd save that. That's that's a good chunk yeah. for for a fourteen year old. I spent it all on a waterproof in dash cd player for my boat my they're, brother's they're now working. I was like, I was like, it's the most expensive cd player you could buy but like well. but like i was like i was happy to blow it and it's kind of 
man, you, you look at my financial portfolio in the last 10 years, man, you would be, uh, yeah. Um, so anyway, so, so growing up, I worked in a small town, so I worked car wash. What was your, what was your first job? Can you remember uh, your first job? I, well, it was, this is before I could drive. I worked at a car wash, right? Wow, so I would okay. shovel, out, shovel out the, uh, the bays. Wow. And uh, so I just get cash. And I still remember, I, I locked somebody's keys in the, in the car, and the boss got real mad at me, and I just never went back, right? So like, <laughs> that was my first one. But after that, I worked at a golf course. I was a groundskeeper, so I did like every job outside you could do. Um, and I did that from 16 to 22. So yeah, I did it for 60 or something like that. So, okay. um, and that, and, but like odd jobs everywhere you can imagine, just small town stuff, you know. Um, I was an auctioneer's assistant for one summer. Yeah, yeah, my buddy's dad was an auctioneer, so I would hold up the stuff. As he, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, so, yeah, that was it. So you've done a mope. Yeah, 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 well, it's a, I, I earned a lot of money and I spent a lot of money. That's kind of the way, the way it goes. Yeah, yeah he's, whatever, man. It's That's, interesting because, yeah. I mean, uh, that's that sort of safe safe to spend uh, mentality isn't something that's just uh, sort of segregated for, for children right yeah I mean yep. adults out mm. especially adults I mean, we see it all mm. the time out here right mm -hmm. yep people save mm. and, and and buy expensive toys and, and stuff like that so mm. um, it's interesting uh, I mean you mentioned that your your parents are quite financially savvy i mean did they introduce you to to uh personal finance where so, did you so where did you learn learn the like the elements of, of, oh, of investment i'm glad you brought this one up because this is a, this is a top a hall of fame parenting moment for for karen my mother right <laughs> she uh she did a family stock market game yeah. where everybody got you know a thousand dollars in play money and everybody bought stocks and then you know at dinner you know every week they would like who, who earned whatever. This is like early internet days, right? And so like, uh, so I won the family stock market game because I said, I'm buying cigarettes and Coca-Cola, right? <laughs> and so like, and so like I won the family stock market game probably when I was about 14, right? And then um, when I graduated high school, so when I was 18, you do a graduation party in the States and people, you give you money, like, okay, yeah. and so it, it, I came home with like $2,500 wow. from this, graduation party and mom's like look you can take the money and run or I'll put it all in the stock market and so I put it all in cigarettes and, and coca-cola <laughs> and uh, you had to look up Philip Morris from 2003 to 2005 but I bought a car with the money I made man they wow. they yeah it was uh, so at that point like I thought I was I thought I was a financial <laughs> guru you know like was that yeah was that uh I mean, how would you how would you describe that that moment? Was it was it more sort of educated guesses, or was it just luck? Or, or no, it, or, you know, you know, you can't pick individual stocks yeah. and like have any type of like track record, right? I, I got lucky, right? I got lucky, but like as a kid, like I thought I thought I was into you know I had it figured out, you know, and so uh, so I stayed kind of down that same path for a while there, yeah. But if it wasn't for your if it wasn't for your parents who who introduced you to say financial markets or investment and how you could actually grow your money by investing your money would you have, I mean was there anyone else I mean did you learn at school or I mean is there anyone is there anywhere that you could have got some sort of education in personal finance I mean it's just kind of like just basic stuff like there was never anybody that like took me under my wing you know like I remember like I remember thinking like when I worked at the golf course and as I worked at this golf course for all these years and um, you know, initially thinking like these owners, you know, they're so rich, they own the golf course, you know, whatever. And then I'm around my, there's some debt you got to calculate into there. And I was like, I'm, I'm in the green. Like I've got money in the bank. Like yeah. I got no debt. And I was like, you know what? So it, it's, that was kind of like, that's where I've liked to stay. You know what I mean? Yeah. I'd like, I, I don't have a car payment. don't have a house payment. Don't have any, like, I, I, I don't like stuff hanging over my head like that. And so that, it's not like anybody ever took me under my wing, but that was like the one thing, just looking around at what was happening. And so that's... Well, I mean, we're, that, that, that's, that's real important because I mean, obviously it's so easy to go the other way. Yeah, uh, yeah. And we know, mm -hmm. I mean, the, you probably, you, everyone knows people that, who are just real sort of, sort of spenders and, and, and uh, can easily find themselves into debt. I mean, mm. where, did you, where did you sort of learn to stay that side of the, of the rope and... and you know, I'm, and look, it's, it, again, it's, I just don't like stuff hanging over my head. Like there's, there's a, 
there's a guy, there's a cowboy, I can't remember his name, we'll look it up, but he, he said, I've always found it's good to be heavily invested in cash, right? And that, that's kind of like a, like, that fits the culture of where I'm from, like, kind of like a self-reliant, like, farmer, like, do-it-yourself type community, right? And they, they, that's the way I've handled it, like, and so, uh, just the idea of waking up with a $500 a month, you know, car payment, like that just stresses me out thinking about it, let alone having to pull it off, you know? So, uh, no man, I just, I just prefer to stay as, well, as conservative as possible. Yeah, like, for, a, for a financial planner, that's uh, yeah, like, music, music yeah. to my ears. Yeah. Um, so, I mean, in terms of, in terms of uh, how you've progressed um, your sort of financial planning, uh, where, now obviously, from the early days of sort of picking random stocks, I mean, uh, how have you sort of progressed now? And, and are you, have you got uh, have you got a sort of routine or, or, or some structure into your into your life? I mean, like you like you mentioned, uh, you, in terms of compensation, is it? Uh, you, here's a good place to be. I mean, how are you sort of structuring that now? I mean, don't know if that's. I mean, like, I mean, like, no, like, like, so coming out here in 2011, right? I said, like, it's, it's the idea of a thousand dollar a month mortgage payment, like, is for 30 years, like, it's it, that's such a normal thing to do, but like, I could never wrap my head around that. So, like, coming out here, I said, okay, if that's the mortgage payment, I'll save that amount, right? I, I'll move out here and I'll just put that uh, that mortgage payment. I'll just tuck it away right and so like that's like the baseline like this is what we're doing every month right and so then you don't even think about it and so I'm, I'm a different type of guy because like I haven't ever I don't even know how to check my my portfolio my stuff like I couldn't if I wanted to you know so like I just know if I keep just tucking it away and keep doing the right things and keep ticking along I'm not gonna need that money for another 20 30 years anyway so like so a quick, quick change of scenery. I think only in Abu Dhabi uh, you start a podcast uh, or a video and uh, people start flying around the F1 track. So I don't know if you, I don't know if you heard that. Where, where, where we're up to? We were talking about you were talking about how you um, you get paid and um, you automatically uh, move money outside your account. And I, I think that's a real important point um, for anyone watching this uh, this podcast, listening to this podcast, because. That automation has been a big key to your success, right? Well, it's it's just one of those, like things where if uh, I'm a hands I'm hands off with all this stuff and it doesn't interest me, not concerned about it. So like, if I just know it just comes out every time, like, and I know it's you know, hopefully doing what it's supposed to do, then then I'm happy with it. But like, it's uh, if I have to go out of my way to do something, it uh, it doesn't get done a lot if I'm not interested so I think it's, it's, it's a huge part of uh, human psychology psych psychology uh, mm. sorry it's hum a huge part of human psychology isn't that make things less re like less resistant do you mm. know what I mean and, and there's a really good book called the automatic millionaire um, and it's about setting yourself up so that things do come out um, of your account every single month and it's automatically done so you don't have to worry about it, worry about it, and you're sort of achieving everything you need to achieve on a monthly basis uh, without thinking. In behavioral terms, because this is like my end of the field. This is what I do, um, you know, with my education stuff, right? But, so it's called response effort. Okay, so how effortful is the response, right? And so if the response is more effortful, right? If you have to do more work for the same thing, the the more work you have, the more aversive it's going to be. The less you're going to enjoy it, and over time, the future probability is gonna be lower, right? So more effortful responses are less enjoyable and there's less probability of them happening in the future, right? So um, less, effort, less effort is more enjoyable and higher probability. So like, for example, like here at Alzena, uh, when I decided I was moving to, uh, going for the Paralympics and kayaking, I said, if I'm gonna be kayaking, if I'm gonna be on the water every day of the week for the next eight years, I have to live on the water, right? I need a response. The effort, effort of that response has to be me, head downstairs, go straight to the beach, right? In 2018, when I started off, I was living you know, on Ream Island. So it was a 35 minute drive, all right? Then find a way to get through the gate, then get down to the beach, get my workout in, and then I'm soaking wet. Right? Mm -hmm. I gotta get back through the gate, back into my car and drive 35 minutes. High effort, low probability of it happening like on a sustained basis, right? So what you're talking about, is all about response effort. So for me, there's no effort, right? So it's it's been that way since 2011. It's just like every month, just like 
just ticking over. So. And I think, I think what's important to realize is that a huge part of being successful financially is the, is the human and behavior aspect of it. And I think people over, over complicate things and, and think it's, it's uh, being able to pick the right stocks or being able to, being able to, to be savvy about investments. But personal finance is, is major, the majority of it is about how you can manage behaviors and how you can manage and set yourself up in terms of structural stuff. So the stuff that you can influence, because a lot of the other stuff you can't influence. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, um, I mean, look, we've, talk, we've talked about a lot about behavior. Um, I mean, what about sort of, in terms of your your financial experience, I mean, has there been any sort of missed opportunities or? <laughs> yeah, like part of the thing, right? When you uh, where you like like save it and spend it and save it and like like you end up in some some sticky situations, right? But uh, so I graduated uni in 2007, um, had a good paying job, you know, um, for you know a good chunk of time, right? And so I said, well, I'm saving everything, I'm stocking up, like. In, in the U.S., your 401k is, uh, you know, pre-tax. So if you put it in your 401k, it doesn't get taxed. So mm -hmm. I said, well, well, we'll max that out. Okay. And so I maxed it out and, you know, put everything in the stock market, you know, because I was the oracle, you know, <laughs> at this point thought I couldn't miss. And so then we get end of 2008, stock market crashes, the worst in 100 years. And, you know, I lose 50% in a week, mm -hmm. you know, and then, uh, and then, uh, you know, I wasn't fully vested in the plan when I left the company, so they took another 30% or whatever it was. And so I went from here to nothing in, you know, in the matter of a month, you know? So that was, that was 2008. Um, and then the other thing is, so, so I came out here to Abu Dhabi and 2011 came out. First thing I did was sign up for the plan where I'm putting all this money away. And then, uh, you know, you became my financial advisor in 2013, 2014. And you were telling me to get this life insurance plan to, um, to uh, you know, protect myself, all that stuff. And I said, man, I just can't imagine saving the amount that I'm saving right now and saying, you know what, I need to go out and save more. You know, like I just couldn't wrap my head around it. And so, uh, so then we were out there playing together and in the grand final, I break my back, right? I'm in the hospital, like getting medevac inside my surgery, you know, you go through all the whatever, right? And, uh, I get medevac back to the States and so there, somebody has to go through my room and clean out all my stuff, right? And they're going through my drawers, right? And like they're going through my, my dresser and on my dresser they find this, you know, catastrophic injury like plan and they, they all listed out and they brought it to me like on the plane, like, please tell me that you signed this. Mm. And I was like, no, <laughs> why would I sign that? <laughs> so, uh, so yeah, we, uh, the, I think we talked about it after, but like it would have been like an initial like just check, no questions asked, quarter million dollars, yeah. just like that. Uh, so I can remember uh, it, 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 conversation that someone someone rang me for the same the same thing. Please tell me that yeah, that, that it got yeah. signed. But mm, mm. Look, I think I mean it's not something that you're gonna you're gonna dwell on. Um, it, it'd be in, like in terms of in terms of um, going back and the, and the cost of, of stuff. I mean like the, 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 the treatment that you needed and stuff. It, it, so I, I was I was fortunate, right? Because uh, um, when, when you break your back, you have surgery, you're in the hospital, you're in bed, you're not moving, right? You don't have any control of anything. It's like, what's the crew around you gonna do to like get you get you back, you know, back rolling, right? Mm. And uh, I just happened to have a very very good crew. You know, my mom was in the medical field. Mm. You know, um, the rugby club is connected to everybody. Um, you know, Eileen Siegel. Uh, if you got to run a fundraiser, she, she, <laughs> you she, call, she you she. call Eileen, right? And so, uh, so um, you know, all that money I would have gotten from you know that insurance payout, we just kind of had to do it the hard way, you mm -hmm. know. And they're just doing fundraiser after fundraiser after fundraiser. And I can still remember, like, even when I was home injured, and they're sending me all this stuff, right? And I was like, look, we're good. We we got so much cash in the bank, we're fine. And I was like, I don't need. And she's like, and I remember Eileen saying, well, what about your lost income? And I was like. I didn't think about that, but yeah, it, it cost me, you know, six digits of income yeah. to be sitting here for a couple of years, you know? So it's like, so yeah, it's, it's one of those things where it all worked out. We got to the same place, right? We ended up in the, in the right spot, but this could have been driving a Lamborghini. <laughs> okay, so I mean, I just sort of like the last sort of couple of questions. I mean, we've spoke a lot about your relationship with money, especially the early sta earlier stages, um, how you've transitioned with money, but I mean, 
what does does money make you happy is it is the physical money i mean does it make you happy you know like it's funny because like it's it's shifted like with with my traumatic injury it's it shifted right because uh it never made me happy like i was always it's always one that i could be i told myself i could be content like in a cabin you know on a river like you know like you just do my own thing right like as an able-bodied person right but now that i'm in you know a chair right that that that's not an option right so like security makes me happy like it makes me happy having money in the bank like the one that like i never had you know visions of living like in a high rise or like in a condo right mm -hmm. but now a condo is where i need to be right and so like i need to live in a house with an with an elevator with a lift right mm -hmm. so like options are like pay for one in like a place like this or you know buy a house and then install my own lift in it you know like like so all of that takes money right so like like security and you know looking after myself and being able to you know get out and do those things is uh much more important now than it was uh you know pre-injury life past abu dhabi can you see further than that or oh uh, no well i try not to man i'm, I'm here through 2025 right okay. 2025 is the next jump off point but um um you know from there um would to see where my body's at um see where my career's at but uh you know i think um i think so if, as part of this process i've started up a you know um you know a website you know like like uh, so it's called the determination project you know okay. so it, it'll kind of like host you know my story and then some stories of some of the other guys going so uh so that's coming online hopefully as soon as you guys are watching this you click over click over Perfect. that so uh so uh anyways it, like we'll see how it goes man yeah. uh we've, we've got some stuff we're working on but we're comfortable here we're happy here Fantastic. um I will be here through 2025 and uh, hopefully doing more saving than spending. Perfect. I don't know. <laughs> Fantastic. So, I mean, look, you just mentioned the Determination Project. Where else can uh, the guys watching this uh, find out more about um, your journey to, to, to the Paralympics and, and, and stuff like that? Yeah, so there's, there's the DeterminationProject.com. Uh, That's our, you know, our website, our, our homepage, right? And then... Uh, it's Mike Ballard USA on Instagram and it's just Mike Ballard on, on Facebook. So, so drop, drop me a line on there. We'll see uh, see what's going on. Fantastic, Mike. Yeah. Well, look, I, uh, I hope you've all enjoyed it today. Mike, thank you so much for, for, for coming on and being our first guest. Um, your, your, your story uh, and you as a person, is, you're an amazing person. Um, and I'm really grateful to have you as a good friend. Um, so, uh, yeah, look, thanks for coming on and uh, look forward to it. Yeah. That's worth a handshake, That's man. It. Thank you, man. Thank you. Nice yeah. one.